Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. On this series, we have reported on dozens of surprising discoveries on two of our solar system's most intriguing types of objects, the comet and the asteroid. In fact, in recent years, the line between the two objects has become increasingly blurred with some asteroids astonishing astronomers with occasional dramatic cometary displays, and with cometary nuclei more strongly resembling asteroids than the dirty snowballs of standard comet theory. Through these reports, we have highlighted the differences in the theoretical predictions and analyses of the electric universe versus those of standard astronomy. In this episode, we will explore the discovery of an object that defies any easy explanation, the first ever so-called interstellar asteroid observed from Earth. Our guest, physicist Eugene Bagashov, explains why today this object appears to present more questions than answers. The object I would like to discuss was first discovered on October 19, 2017 by PanStars Observatory. At that time it was pretty close to Earth, about 30 million kilometers, which means closer than Venus at its inferior conjunctions. A week later, two previous observations of the object were identified in the Catalina Sky Survey archive, dated October 14th and 17th. The object quickly gained much attention from the astronomical community, because its velocity that was calculated from the difference between the observed positions on those dates was very high, almost 46 km per second. As the trajectory of its motion was projected backwards in time, it turned out that the object's perihelion, when it was at the closest distance to the Sun, happened on September 9th. And at that time the speed should have been around 87 km per second. Compare this to the speed of Mercury, the fastest planet in the solar system, which is about 57 km per second at its perihelion. It follows from such high velocity that the Sun's gravitation is not strong enough to keep this object from leaving the system, so it travels along a non-periodic hyperbolic trajectory. When the trajectory was projected even farther backwards, it turned out that at the edges of the system, well beyond the orbit of Neptune, the speed should have been around 26 km per second, which is definitely too high for the Sun to keep it in the solar neighborhood. Of course, theoretically, the object could have gained the high speed it was observed with from close encounter with Jupiter or Saturn, but high inclination of its orbit around the Sun means that such an encounter could never happen. So it was concluded that the object must come from outside the solar system, and thus since that moment it was formally designated as 1I-2017 U1, where I stands for interstellar and the number 1 clearly indicates that it is the first known object of that sort. To commemorate the significance of the occasion, the object also received a given name Oumuamua, meaning scout or messenger in Hawaiian. Obviously, this is quite a big and somewhat problematic discovery, and I wish to discuss the implications that it might have for the electric universe agenda and the electric comet hypothesis in particular. Initially, it was supposed that Oumuamua should be a comet because of its extremely stretched hyperbolic orbit, but extensive analysis of the images have shown that it lacks any visible signs of cometary activity, such as coma or tails, which should have already appeared at such close distance to the Sun. So now it is considered to be an asteroid. Of course, like in many other similar cases, there are also speculations made by some people that because of its peculiar trajectory, it might be an artificial object, perhaps made by some alien civilization. But so far there is no evidence to support this idea. The spectrum of the object is quite similar to the ones that the asteroids in the solar system have, and so far there have been no signs of changes in its orbit which would be caused by some sort of propulsion system. It is interesting that the direction from which the object was supposedly entering the solar system is only about 6 degrees away from the direction of motion of the Sun itself through the local stellar neighborhood, the so-called solar apex. Remember that the Sun not only orbits the galactic center at about 260 km per second, but also on top of this motion goes towards the apex with the speed of about 20 km per second. 
So it seems that before the encounter with the sun, Oumuamua was moving roughly in the opposite direction with respect to the surrounding stars, with velocity of about 6 km per second, so that the addition of these velocities yielded the 26 km per second that the object supposedly had upon encounter with the sun. Anyway, getting closer to the point, in my opinion the discovery of this interstellar asteroid represents a problematic result for the electric comet hypothesis. In particular, I would like to reference my own talk at the EU 2016 conference, where I've presented a preliminary analysis of the orbits of comets in the solar system. The data available at that time was clearly showing that all the asteroids in the system have periodic elliptical orbits, and only comets could demonstrate non-periodic parabolic or hyperbolic orbits. If the cometary activity is caused, for example, by the release of negative charge accumulated by the body when it spends some time at the outskirts of the system, of course we would expect exactly such picture. Any object that appears in the inner system only once, following a parabolic or hyperbolic orbit, would experience such discharge, and the data seem to show that this is the case. But this recent discovery has shown that there is at least one object that has a hyperbolic orbit and yet does not demonstrate any cometary activity. The big question that arises is, why is it the case? While well, being very far from the Sun, Oumuamua should have accumulated the same negative charge as the other hyperbolic comets do, and should have experienced the same type of discharge as it moved closer to our star. I should say up front that I don't have the definite answer to this question. The best I can provide at this point is only some additional assumptions and considerations. For example, we might look at the shape of the object, which could be an important factor contributing to its peculiar response to the solar plasma. The recent paper in the journal Nature states that Oumuamua has very distinct light curve, showing strong peaks of brightness every 7.3 hours, supposedly due to its rotation. The modeling shows that the observed picture is consistent with a very dark, slightly reddish object with an average radius of about 100 meters, but with very elongated ellipsoidal shape. The ratio of its length to its width should be around 10 to 1. The exact size depends on its reflectivity or albedo, and for example if it's around 4%, which is more or less reasonable, then Oumuamua's size along three axes should be around 800 by 80 by 80 meters. Another possible explanation for the rapid changes in brightness is big differences in albedo across the surface, though the authors state that one does not necessarily exclude the other. The spectrum of the body actually implies that the albedo remains roughly constant across the surface, so highly elongated shape seems to be the most likely explanation for the variations in brightness. So one might suppose that the highly elongated shape tends to somehow inhibit the appearance of cometary features. At first I thought that it might help to separate charges that might accumulate at the opposite ends of the object. But during the discussion with other members of the community, Nathan Allen suggested that it could lead to the opposite effect, namely the quick dissipation of charges. Indeed, a spiky shape yields much less capacitance than the spherical one, so it might be the case that the charge accumulated by Oumuamua at the edges of the solar system have since then quickly dissipated, never leading to a pronounced glow or arc mode of discharge. So continuing this line and venturing even farther into hypothetical areas, I've had an idea that cometary activity could be more prominent in spherical bodies and would become suppressed for axial symmetry. One might imagine a scenario in which an initial spherical body undergoes a cometary discharge which gradually erodes away its material, slowly reducing its shape from a sphere into such a prolonged cylinder. It might be a possible explanation for the frequently observed double-lobed objects. In this case, for example, Comet 67P's double lobes, in the coming thousands or millions of years, should be grinded down to match its thin neck, in the end resulting in a cigar-shaped body, much like Oumuamua's. So in this case, it seems there might exist a sort of natural limit to the possibility of comet-like response to the stellar plasmas, when a comet would at some point cease to form coma and tails since its nucleus has already degraded into such unfavorable cylindrical shape. 
The good thing about this hypothesis is that it could be directly falsified by the observations of the comets that are becoming less and less active. If the reason for their dimming is simply the lack of volatiles as follows from the snowball model, they would not on average tend to be elongated as in the presented case. At some point, I also suppose that an axially symmetric shape of Oumuamua might be the sign of some intrinsic magnetization, where the opposite ends of the cylinder would represent the magnetic poles. This might explain the lack of cometary activity, since the magnetic field of the object would shield it from the solar plasma, making the discharge at least less efficient, if not impossible. But on the other hand, it is unlikely that this is the case, as the object demonstrates more or less uniformly the reddish color that is frequent among solar wind weathered bodies, so it should not have sufficient protection from the surrounding plasma. And if the magnetic field was present, the magnetic pole areas would be weathered to a larger extent, since they provide a natural pathway for funneling of the charged particles onto the surface through the magnetic cusps, the exact same process which causes auroras on Earth to focus around polar areas. Other factor that might contribute to the lack of observed cometary features is the relatively small size of the body. Indeed, in the electric comet perspective, the smaller nucleus would also mean lower capacitance and less possibilities for the accumulation of negative charge. And out of total 105 comets with defined diameter at the JPL small body database, only 5 objects have diameter less than 1 km. The smallest estimate for the diameter of comets existing in this database is 420 meters that the comet 147P Kushida Muramatsu has. Another possibility is some peculiar surface composition of Oumuamua that might make cometary type discharge less probable. This is the line of thought I haven't sufficiently followed, but I have to note that so far the spectrum of the body looks quite trivial, so perhaps surface properties are not the key to explaining the situation. One important question that I have so far omitted is the origins of Oumuamua. If it indeed comes from some other stellar system, then we might ask, how and why did it happen? If the scenario that I've outlined above is correct and the shape of the object plays a crucial role, then one might suppose that Oumuamua once was orbiting some other star, or perhaps a system of two or three stars, in a highly eccentric elliptical orbit and experiencing the cometary-like discharge that slowly eroded its surface away until it stopped responding to the stellar wind in a cometary manner. Then its orbit was perturbed by a planet or some other object and it was kicked away from the system. This is at least one possibility. And as a side note, it would be interesting to see what implications the electric comet hypothesis might provide in the case of multiple stars in the same system. In my opinion, this is the area from which a potentially falsifiable prediction might emerge, especially in the light of Oumuamua's discovery. It is possible that more bodies of such sort would be discovered in the coming years, and since binary systems are quite frequent across the galaxy, the probability of catching a fragment from such system is also relatively high. Now one might also suppose that Oumuamua was electrically excavated from a rocky planet, as is supposed in certain EU scenarios for small bodies in the solar system, and sent into interstellar space right away. In this case, the cylindrical shape that is supposedly unfavorable for the cometary activity would be just a coincidence. In any event, the dirty snowball model of comets should settle for something similar, since in this case it requires that Oumuamua was spending a lot of time close to a star, so that the volatiles on its surface would completely evaporate and the object would never ever show any cometary features. But then there is also a slight difficulty that in order to lose volatiles effectively, Oumuamua should have orbited quite close to the star where the gravity is stronger, which also means that it was not very likely to escape the system later. Authors of the mentioned paper also note that there is a slight possibility that Oumuamua is actually native to our solar system, but received its high initial velocity after interacting with some yet undiscovered body. The direction from which the object was falling into the inner system is only about 16 degrees from the galactic disk, which is an area that many surveys tend to avoid to reduce background from the galaxy. So it is not impossible that there is a body, say, of the size of Pluto or even bigger somewhere out there that could have provided the necessary kinetic energy. 
At the same time, one should note that it is a completely different area with respect to the location of the hypothesized ninth planet. At the very least, it's too high above the ecliptic plane. So it seems there are still lots of questions about this peculiar discovery. And I hope that the struggle for providing an explanation for these unusual observations would help to refine and at the same time constrain the electric comet hypothesis, bringing it ever closer to a status of solid established theory that is able to make predictions on a regular basis. I would also like to note that in the coming years not only the interstellar but even our local asteroids might provide important clues for further development. It is especially true in the light of ongoing missions such as OSIRIS-REx and Hayabusa 2, both to encounter their targets next summer, and planned missions like Psyche and Lucy to be launched in a few years. It's a great opportunity to start looking for a type of prediction that might invalidate the view of these objects as billions of years old and at the same time to answer the crucial question about the difference between asteroids and comets that is of such big importance for the electric comet hypothesis. For continuous updates on space news from the electric universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.